In fact, government are making these claims that it is, we are able to see year on year um, improvements, but they also almost put a little disclaimer into their own report where they acknowledge this weakness. Exactly. So this is one of the ironies uh, of the report is uh, if you go and read through the report, you'll see there are these caveats where they say uh, the ANAs aren't strictly comparable year to year because there's differences in content coverages. There can be dif differences uh, in um, difficulty levels. So they say, and therefore the ANAs aren't perfectly comparable. But this is a serious euphemism. Uh, they're not perfectly comparable. They are not at all comparable, uh, either from year to year or across grades. There is no statistical or methodological foundation for making any comparison uh, across grades uh, or over time. And yet this is what the, the department is doing, uh, and that's very misleading. Nicholas, let's get into it, and, and can you perhaps talk us through some of the, um, the problems that you're seeing with the numbers? Give us some, of, some examples. Sure. Um, so if we look at the grade one maths results, for example, I can tell you something about the tests and then also the way that the tests are administered. So if we look at the results from 2012 to 2013 to 2014, the grade one maths average went from 68%, which is quite high, dropped to 59%, and then shot back up to 68% the next year. So these kind of gigantic changes from year to year are absolutely impossible, educationally speaking. Um, and if you ask an expert in the field, they say this, is, this would be based on differences in the way that the test was administered or differences in the difficulty levels. There are other problems with grade one and grade two. For example, teachers assess their own students uh, and they also assess the test orally. Uh, so they actually talk the students through the test uh, as they go. And there's some legitimate reasons behind this. Sometimes um, very young kids get afraid of tests and if there's a stranger that comes in to do the assessment, um, it can be very, sort of puts them off and then you can't get, what they, you can't get at what they know. Um, but then we, sh we can't claim that these kinds of tests are telling us reliable information about what these children know. So that's just one example. Another example would be if we look at some of the provincial results, uh, they are really just ludicrous, the, the size of the changes. So if we look at um, grade four home language results uh, in Limpopo, for example, this went up from 24% in 2012 to 51% in 2014. So it doubled uh, in two years. These kinds of changes have never been seen anywhere in the world ever. And there's no, in recorded human history, we haven't seen examples of those kinds of changes uh, of that order of magnitude. So that's, if you look at the, uh, the statistics behind it, that's a one standard deviation increase. Now you might say, okay, what, what does that mean? That's quite difficult to understand. Um, another study, the pre pearl study of 2011, also tested grade four home language. That was a reliable assessment. And to give you uh, an indication of the size of that, um, that change, it's the same as the difference between township schools um, and suburban schools, mainly X Model C schools. So this is a gigantic change, and apparently this change happened across the whole of Limpopo within two years. These are just absolutely ridiculous um, changes that are happening over time, and when, if, there's no expert that would back these kinds of changes and say these things are possible.